when I was still in high school, I built my first toolbox. And I want to show this toolbox to you in a minute. But let me first tell you the story about this first toolbox that I built. So when I was a senior in high school, it was 1972, and I was fearful of being drafted and going to Vietnam. And halfway through my senior year, they abolished the draft and wrapped up the war, and I was free. And I had one goal, one thing on my mind, I'm going to Yosemite. I'm going to live in Yosemite, I'm going to work in Yosemite, I'm going to become an amazing rock climber, but I needed a way to protect my gear as well as have something to protect everything from bears. So I built this toolbox that I'm going to show you right now. But wait till you see what I've got in it. I think you're going to like this. Well, I did in fact make it to Yosemite. And I lived there for a better part of a year in an 8x10 tent. I worked at the search and rescue team at Camp 4, and this bear box proved itself to be invaluable. And look what I'm storing in there now. I'm going to talk about those a little bit later and go through one at a time and start restoring some of these. I literally have a hundred or more wooden block planes, all in need of restoration, one at a time. Now this box is held up pretty good. So before I get into the initial topic of this particular video, which is going to be on the plow plane, I want to talk a little bit about hand planes. I reached over and I grabbed the first hand plane that I've got up on my ready-to-go rack, and it was not sharp. I thought maybe it was the grain direction, but uh, it just wasn't sharp. So I grabbed one that I know is sharp. And look at the difference in the way these cut. This one's also set for a much finer cut. So it makes nice, beautiful curls of shavings. Now, grant you, I'm using pine here, and a lot of the construction was done on softwoods. So if you try this on a really, really hard wood, you can do it, but um, it, it's, it's a lot different. So I, I recommend that if you're starting out, you know, work with softwoods like pine or cedar or redwood or, or something that um, is a little more forgiving, especially if you're using hand tools. Now I've switched over just to show you some more tools here. This is a completely wooden block plane. Now, not completely wooden, the blade is steel. That's it. It's got a wooden wedge holding the blade in place. And these wooden tools are really fussy. Um, once you learn how to tune them and adjust them, they seem to work pretty well, but they get out of adjustment very easy. Because the only thing that's holding that blade in place is that little wooden wedge. You can see this one's set just a little bit thick, but it's making some beautiful thick shavings. So I went over and I got my more current block plane. This is a modern block plane. That's actually a low angle block, and it's got an adjuster on there that uh, lets you adjust the throat as well. I was noticing that my edge was not completely square, so I'm working on the high part of this to bring it down to a level. And now I'm getting some pretty complete shavings all the way across. I'm sitting in the house doing this narration by the fire. You can hear it popping in the background. So um, I'm going to be talking a bit about the plow plane in this video, but in order to use a plow, plow plane efficiently, you're going to be running a fence along a straight edge. So I'm just kind of working a little bit on the straight edge and pulling out a few of my tools. This is a wooden plane, and if you notice the shape of it, it's not flat on the bottom. I have a whole set of hollows and rounds, and one has a curve one direction, the other is rounded on the other side, so thus you've got hollows and rounds. And those are um, utilized in making almost any shape of molding. This is, I'm just using that to kind of lighten up the edges. 
And I thought while I was at it, I'm going to go pull out a big old wooden uh, jointer plane. This is a, a long one. Back in the day, everything was wood. And a lot of carpenters liked the feel of wood on wood. And you can screw up the, the face of this plane with another plane. And you can make it dead flat again. And you want to keep them smooth and waxed and in really good condition. You don't want to drop these planes. So now I've put the, the board, the piece of pine, over on its edge. Notice this is a fairly tight grain little piece of pine. And here's the plow plane. This is a really old tool dating back to the 1800s. And the plow planes, typically you bought a plow plane and the plow plane would be a dedicated tool for a set width on the cutter. This particular cutter that I have in here is for a quarter inch groove. You see how I'm kind of making a lot of little intermittent um, back and forth cuts? I've found that many planes, once you get them started like this, and you can get the, the groove or the, the dado or whatever you're working on cut, then you've got something for the blade to follow, and then you can be a little bit more consistent in your strokes. But lots of little jab cuts. Now it'll go smooth. Now it'll go all the way through. And there is a depth stop built into this plow plane that only allows you to go so far. So before you do any work with an old plow plane like this, A, you've got to make sure it is razor sharp. B, you've got to set the fence on the plow plane to the distance where you want to locate your, um, your groove. This is, what I'm doing here would be consistent with um, maybe making a box or a drawer or something that you have to capture a panel in. The thing about a lot of these wooden planes is they do jam up the, the shavings, so periodically you've got to reach in there and pull them out and keep it clear. So I grabbed yet another uh, plow plane, and this has a, a 3 8 inch cutter. It's a little bit bigger, and it's a very similar plow plane to the the other one that I have. And notice that the adjustments on the uh, on the fence, they have bars that go through the wood that have little wedges in it, and that's how you make your adjustments to hold it the fence in place. So it's a fairly simple tool. Um, the, the metal runner that rides along with the blade is, is very, very important. The depth uh, that you have the blade extend past the runner determines how thick of a shaving you make. You keep cutting and cutting and cutting until you get down to the depth stop. But the thickness of the shaving is dependent upon how far you have that cutter protruding. And you tap the cutter a little bit and then you put the wedge back in place. You have to always keep tapping the wedge. And in use these things quite often come loose. So you're you're fussing with it. Quite often it's it's a matter of setting it up and working a little bit more and trying to find the the right setting for it. But once you get them set, they are a real joy to work. Now if I had all my parts cut and I had them all laid out on the bench in one long shot, or even before I cut each section of the, the box, I could run this groove all the way along the board and then cut the board into parts. You know, tighter the ends, but you'd have the consistent groove all the way to the bottom that would capture a well, maybe a quarter inch piece of plywood or a uh, grooved uh, panel that you've made. You know, not grooved, but uh, with angles on the sides. So this one I'm setting just beyond the, the quarter inch groove. And you can see the difference in the, the width of the cut. This one is just a hair bigger, but it, it's, it's noticeably bigger um, in terms of what you could put into it. And once again, the, the shavings get jammed up inside. I usually have a little tool with me. So here I'm showing two of the grooves. You can see one is quarter inch, one is three eighths of an inch. And I wanted to show you yet another type of a plow plane. This is a Stanley 46. It's very much like a Stanley 45, but it has an angled blade to it. And it has a set of cutters 
Uh, it doesn't have any real fancy cutters, it just has a whole set of cutters for different size grooves, but every one of the cutters is, is um, sharpened at an angle, so you, you get more of a skew when you're working it down the wood. And once again, you use the same kind of approach. You have to keep the fence nice and flat up against the edge of the board, and once you start getting the the groove cut in your wood, then you can get to a point where it'll take nice long strokes because the blade will be riding inside the cut and that'll keep it guided. Um, it goes a lot smoother that way. And you always get little tiny jag jagged edges, so it's a good idea just to put a little light sanding on it just to take any of those slivers off. So that's the plow plane, and there's a whole assortment of different types of plow planes. And here I've got a Stanley 45, as well as a Stanley 55, and all the parts and all the cutters and everything are in the boxes, and I'll have to pull those out sometime and show you those. Th those are worthy of a, a video on their in their own right. But there you go. That's how you fit a a, a panel into a groove. Thanks for watching.